Welcome back. Today, I am super excited about this build. Got a couple of uh, existing builds on the table here, and we're gonna start this out with a little question to you guys. So, got two rigs here on the table, super nice. Both little guy comp frames. But the question is, what's better than two? Well, the answer is of course, three. So I've got yet another comp frame here to build up, but there's a little twist. We're taking this to the dark side. This is the Midnight Edition, otherwise known as black. So anyways, without any further delay, let's dig into this. Look at the blackness here. That is beautiful. So uh, typically all your anodized parts here with the kit are gonna be in the gray. But with this one, you get uh, anodized links, skid, you get your rear bumper mount, front bumper, and your rails all in black. So super sleek now, just everything is blacked out. Love that. And of course, you get uh, their nice new graphic assembly sheet here that makes putting this together a breeze. Color-coded hardware corresponds to the color-coded baggie. So really easy to get this guy together with that reference there. So basically everything above the rails is 3D printed here, all the black plastic there. So as usual, there are gonna be a few substitutions. And with substitutions come castaways. So I've got those sitting up top and down below. I've got my usual picks here. I've got the billet aluminum shock towers, the braces, and then the sideboard sliders. But I'm also trying something I have not used before, and that is their 100% black brass center skid. So nice to add a little bit more low weight right there in the center. Of course that is sprung, but uh, it's not too heavy. So it's nice that they give you that tuning option. So we're gonna have to uh, discard this super nice billet machine black skid, but that's just kind of the name of the game. When you sub in parts, you can't use everything, right? So I'm gonna do a little work here, get this frame assembled, and we'll come back and take a look at the finished product. All right, got this Black Beauty fully assembled, just per the instructions, so the full kind of standard comp frame build. You can see how long it is here, set up for that Toyota body with the really long overhang bed versus, you know, you can see where the axles are gonna be basically here. But uh, we may do something about that length later, but this guy is just gorgeous. All this black aluminum, a little bit of black brass down there. Let's take a look at the belly. And I love this little bevel feature at the uh, frame. So when you get these links spread, you don't have any conflict there with the frame rail. So great little design there. Just fantastic looking frame. Didn't think it could get any better than that anodized gray comp frame, but this Midnight Edition is just fantastic. So as much as I would like to just stare at this all day, we've got more to build. Next up, we're gonna focus on the front axle assembly. So continuing that midnight theme, I picked up their new black brass front axle. So prior to this, they only offered those in kind of the raw brass polished look. So now you get a nice uh, black brass diff cover as well. So that's super nice. And then of course, picked up their knuckles, their steering links, and their servo tray in black as well. A front axle bearing kit. I picked up some 212 overdrive from Little Guy. The plus one hex is here. And then for the actual inners, I'm going uh, away from Little Guy. I've got the XO Super 8 U joint inners there. So those will give me that 55 degrees of steering, nice smooth rotation. And then you can see for the servo, we've got Mofo's top of the line servo beast here ready to go. So again, solid black. That will fit this theme nicely. And then to uh, keep that front end under control, I've got the aluminum black limit strap mount set up here. So got a little bit of assembly to go. I'm pretty excited about this. I love building axles and uh, little guy axles are always super, super nice to put together. So I'm gonna do a little work, come back and we'll take a look at this guy. Well, didn't get too far down the road without encountering my first opportunity. And I say that because it's an opportunity to get out the Dremel. So you can see I've got my little sanding wheel attachment on there, which is a great way to take a little material off of flat surfaces. 
and that's exactly what I needed to do here. So the knuckles would not slide on to the end of the axles. So it's that classic case of black coating on both parts. And uh, when that happens, I always pick the less expensive piece to modify, which in this case was the knuckles. So I took a little material off the top and bottom of these mounts and I'll show a shot of that. But that's all it needed. You know, they're still tight against, there's no up and down play but they're nice and loose now and obviously fit on the axle. So I also got these uh, titanium XO U-joints in here, nice and smooth there. And of course, no bearing in the outer axle ends. So that allows that full lay over there. So these are just gonna be insane. So a little more assembly to do, but I wanted to update you on that. On to the second issue. Well, this one's unfortunate. I'm a little bummed but uh, it's probably on me. I forgot I knew this going in, but uh, if you don't know, Mofo RC's Servo Beast case is just a tad bit larger than uh, typicals in this range, like an NSDRC or a little guy. So when you lay it on the mount, you can see some misalignment in the holes there. So I couldn't get the screws to go through so the solution would be to wallow out the servo holes a little bit to make that work, which I could do, but I really want to use this limit strap set up with the comp frame. And so this is even thrown off more, you can see. So it's misaligned to the top because of the thickness. So it's just three layers all out of alignment there. So what I'm gonna do to solve that is order another servo that is compatible with this mount I could swap to a MoFo servo mount, but like I said, I really like this uh, setup with the comp frame with that limiter. So I think I'm gonna do a little searching and order up a new servo, but in the meantime, we're gonna keep rolling. All right, we are back in black. Well, actually midnight this time, it actually says it on the packaging. So got a complete billet axle here in midnight. So not gonna add any brass to this guy but you can see it does not come with any kind of uh, link riser, link mount. So got that taken care of with this nice black aluminum trio double capture mount. So we're gonna get that on there, pop a little utter butter in there, get the hexes on and we'll be ready to rock with this guy. Black again, I mean back again, getting tongue tied here. So we've got a complete rear axle now, nothing to it, did have to use a little bit of double side 3M as a shim under this link riser, which is pretty typical to get rid of just a little wiggle. Even when you tighten the screws down, there's a little wobble. So it seemed like a little tighter fit than normal. And of course on the front with this uh, black coated brass servo tray, it was a tight fitment, just like my last build. So that has been the first time I have not had to use a shim. So I don't know if they're, it's just the coating or they're addressing that in the design somehow, but Seem to be a little bit tighter tolerances than typical. Got the uh, utter butter in the gears here, and you know, this is just exactly why they call it butter. Just super smooth here. So exactly what you want. So I think we are wrapped up here with that rear axle assembly. Of course, we're gonna have to circle back to this front axle. So I think in the meantime, why don't we focus on the center? And for the center section, it's gonna get a little bizarro. And I say that because I picked out a transmission that last time I used, I said I wouldn't use again or recommend. This is the Midnight MR24. This is LGRP's proprietary transmission. So the last time I used it, this center spacer section came to me mismachined, ultimately got it replaced, got it all working smooth. But uh, I just said, you know, a lot of screws, a lot of parts, a lot of pieces, so wouldn't recommend it. So that's a little bizarre. I'm gonna give it another day in court. Sticking with that midnight theme, why not? Let's move on to the center here of the table. So more bizarreness here. So couldn't decide if I'm gonna use the little guy motor, Fury Tech motor, so why not use both? So if you notice the text there, LGRP X Fury Tech Micro Komodo. So this guy is now co-branded. So you can see Fury Tech, and then let's spin this guy on over, LGRP Komodo. So got a blacked out little guy Komodo. And then what's this black box over here? Same deal. They have partnered and co-branded the Lizard Pro 
So super sweet there that they uh, kind of linking up with Fury Tech, some great ESCs, great motors from Fury Tech. And it doesn't look like there's any real change to the Lizard Pro as far as the documentation. It's just kind of a case rebranding and I'm sure the same on the motor. So some new stuff here, kind of familiar stuff at the same time. So anyways, a little bit of assembly to go, but let's jump into this, see if there's any surprises. First things first, had to get this pinion pressed on this little motor. So, uh, you know, it'd be nice if these were already pressed on, but I'm sure they just do that so they can use these motors for whatever little micro and pinion setup that need to be included. So this is how I did it. <clears throat> I just taped some rubber there on the ends here, and it's really nice because you can kind of adjust the jaw size and then, you know, cinch it one more down once you get a little closer. But, you know, as far as you can press it on, it's basically to the end of the shaft. So that looks like that'll be just fine. So it wasn't too hard at all, no damage or scuffing to the motor. And you can pick up, you know, this little bit of rubber, like Home Depot Lowe's has this kind of stuff, maybe in the plumbing department, but anything really to just be a pad there on that. And then this transmission seems super smooth here. So it doesn't look like there's any uh, mismachining. I can't get this uh, throughput shaft to even wobble. So it seems like really nice tolerances on this assembly here. So I'm going to keep uh, forging ahead, get this guy made it up, and uh, we'll take a look at it. A little update on the motor mounting here. So after a quick test fit, I realized I needed to press that pinion on a little further, and you can see it protruding past that spur. So the spur is basically centered up on the pinion gear, so basically perfect there. Beforehand, the pinion wasn't even all the way on the spur gear. So to do that, I slipped one of those Injora aluminum spacers over the end of the pinion, and that allowed me to press it down about a millimeter more, as you can see. But super easy to do. Got the alignment I needed, and then I've got a little wiggle here, as you can see in the mesh. Nice and smooth, nice tight tolerances, but uh, no binding, nice and loose. And you can see I did use a little utter butter in the transmission with those metal gears. And I also recommend a little thread locker on these uh, pieces of hardware for the motor. There's no lock washer or anything, so those can vibrate loose potentially, but you don't need much, just a tad. So I think that does it for the center section. Well, who says you can't hang axles without a servo? So we got the uh, transmission mounted in, as you can see, just gorgeous. So we're moving on to shocks. So I figured I'd go ahead and get these guys out and get the axles attached to the comp frame. So you can see I got these nice black little guy telescoping. So these are their 54s. They offer these in multiple lengths. I believe this is kind of the mid length, but nice smooth telescoping shock here. I wish these black springs were the soft, but these are the stiffest. So these are probably coming off, but those would really look good on the build being black. But they've got the medium silver and then the uh, super soft gold here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of spring swapping, get these axles actually attached here, and we'll see what this looks like as a blacked out slider. Look at that black beauty. Shocks are in and nice and smooth. And I've got the stand out because we're getting real here. So you can see I used some Injora spacers, the two millimeter at the top, and I used ones at the bottom all the way around. And uh, that keeps these shocks off of the frame when you twist. I can see if I twist this guy, this ends up straight down. So you want a little space there so you're not rubbing that shock and getting bound up there. And the other little tip there, I took out the O-ring on the outer large flange side of all these uh, little shock eyelets here. And again, that's just to keep those from binding. So I'm basically got my initial setup. I'm as low as I can go. So I'm basically almost hitting the tray at the back and the same at the front, almost hitting this brace, you know, mount point at the top with that limit strap piece. So that limit strap piece is kind of nice since I don't have a servo, I can still kind of do my initial setup here. And so speaking of that setup, bring this down here. So if we look at that servo mount point and twist this frame, you can see it's back at that wide point of the frame. You can see they're coming up right at it. So 
Really, I would like that to be up in this wide portion of the frame here, because when you twist, you're gonna hit that frame with the mounts on the side, and you can see that right there. So, I mean, it, it can slide by, but it can also get caught. So I just, I really don't like that since they do have the frame designed to allow for clearance. They just don't have the longer lower links to get the axle up further. So, you know, I can lean the servo further forward, but then I'm pointing down with the servo. So I've got kind of that reverse caster that you're looking for. So I think because we've got that uh, limit strap holder and kind of can figure out the outline of the servo, we've got the tabs. I think we can move ahead with a little more fine tuning setup on this front end. Boy, that was some fast progress. And we changed colors a little bit here. Well, I've got out this uh, existing build here again for some reference. So if you notice those front lowers on this guy kind of tuck up and you don't even see them. That's because I did this uh, little solution here to move this front axle forward. So these are actually both front, just normal axle steering links. And I've got those stretched a little bit here to give me around the 63, 64 millimeter range, but that gave me a little extra length on that front axle. And then you can see because of the steering link kind of double bend, they just disappear up there. So uh, looks like the breakover because that the sliders are so acute there. Hopefully that won't hang up on the skid because these kind of tuck up before the leading edge, but they definitely give you that length that's needed to get this servo up now, like at the front part of that 45. So it was back about two or three millimeters on that black comp frame chassis. So this is the setup I'm looking for. And then it puts that servo horn right at the frame at full lock and full compression. So you can't get any better than that. We're getting everything out of shocks, out of uh, links, out of, uh, you know, clearances here, we're right down as far as we can get. So this is what I'm gonna try to replicate at least uh, on this black one. And of course, since this guy is all black, let me get this out in front, we're not using stainless. Well, we are using stainless, but not raw stainless. We're using Enjora's black solid stainless. And then you can see I've got uh, these stretched, I guess, two millimeters. I've got a one on each side. So these are measuring out at 64 eye to eye. So I'm gonna pop these in on the black one, see if I can't get this axle up a little further where I want it, and uh, we'll come back and take a look at that setup. Okay, I think I've got my final setup here on the front end, at least until the servo gets here, but I ended up taking out a little bit of length on those front lowers. And you can see there, there's only one of those spacers at the front now. So I think that put these at maybe 62 and a half versus 64-ish. But uh, the reason I had to do that was with them lengthened a little more, it gave, of course, a little more lean. So I put these tabs back further. So this setup gets them, you can see that little chamfer point on the frame right there. And you see this come up and you barely hit that chamfer, but you're basically in front of it with those mounts. So definitely slides off much easier. What would be nice is to have a little more length on those uppers, but those uppers are restricted. They have to be in the up position and in the uh, rear because you can see once you get this guy compressed and especially on a twist, those lowers come into contact with the uppers. So right there is just like the max clearance. So everything is working out without binding, but if I move this forward, I start to get a bind about right there on twist. And that's just because of the double bend on those lowers. So, you know, you're kind of restricted there on that upper position. And then I've got it at the rear on the servo tray. So as long as I can get those uppers right now, but I think a millimeter more on the front uppers would allow me to lengthen the lowers a little bit and get this servo fully clear of hitting the frame chamfer at all. You can see it on that opposite side right there, just barely kissing it. But that's about as good as you can get with no further alterations. So like I say, I think I'm going to wait till that servo comes in to do any further adjustment on the front end. So with that done, we can move on to something else.
Figured we may roll into a little testing, but first we've got to get this little micro receiver soldered together. So this is the uh, FS2A4 channel that's compatible with the Flysky GT5 radio. So I use this quite a bit. Nice little compact footprint, and you can see it's got a little bind button here on one side. So I usually put the pins on the opposite side over the board to give it a really small footprint. And they, uh, they're pretty loose and they'll slip in and out. So what I do is flex out the pins, and I've already done that, just a little bit, you know, just a couple of them. And that's just enough to put a little tension when you slide it in. So you may have to squeeze them a little, but then they'll, they'll kind of hold in the position. So you want to get them just a little bit of the pin coming through there, square it up. And then uh, you can see I've got my helping hands here to hold it. So I'm going to get this guy set up a little further, and then we'll do a little soldering. All right, first thing I like to do is get a little flux and just, you know, get that stuff all over the pins. Just makes the uh, solder flow pretty easy. So I just kind of smear it on, doesn't really matter. You can come back and take it off so it's not so messy. But uh, just get you some on there. That'll help, that'll help out, trust me. Next thing we're gonna need is a nice soldering setup. So I've got one here. I believe this is Hako, I'm not sure, H-A-K-K-O, but a nice, uh, a well-reviewed system. So I've had this, had no issues with it. Got my sponge wet, got a little bit of uh, cleaner in there as well, the little brass Brillo. Let's get this guy cranked on. So of course you can custom set your temp. I just had it heated up, so it ought to be pretty quick here. Look at that, boom. So we are ready to go. So a good soldering setup helps. I had the little wands that just plug to the wall forever. You know, they suck. So it's worth a little bit of an investment if you're gonna do any soldering. And of course, we're gonna need a little bit of solder, which you got there. So I think now let's uh, jump in and see if we can't attack this little guy, if it'll focus here, and get something uh, soldered up. All right, this will be interesting. So need a little solder on the tip always to start and clean that a little bit so there's not so much. And then just go in and I just put it on one of the pins here and start some heat. Let that pin heat up. And then we'll see if we can get a little solder to flow. Hardest part is getting it stick looks like we got it we got just a little we can go back and add more but let's go ahead and get one on the other side get a little more solder on here having a little solder on there helps transfer the heat if you stick it to it and just pop it off so there we go that easy so i'm going to do the rest and uh, we'll come back and take a look at it not too hard as you saw and uh you know when i did my first one i was really nervous here but what i found is you can really just slop it on and if you bridge any you can come back with the hot solder gun and just run it right through the joint and it just takes it off. It'll just stick to the solder gun. So uh, it's pretty easy to come back and clean up your grid here just to make sure there's no bridging. And then uh, I always take a photo of it or something so I can really see pretty close and make sure there's no bridging, but really super easy to do. So we are ready to go for a little testing. Okay, we are plugged up, ready to test. And I've actually done a little adjusting on the Fury Tech app. And uh, speaking of plugging up here, you can see the yellow signal cable is towards the board. So uh, when you plug it in to bind it, you want to hold this bind button on the back while you turn on the ESC and hold down the bind on the radio as you turn that on and then you are good to go. So like I say, we are already bound up. So let's get this guy on. Let's get a little closer look at this motor. It seems to have a little grumble in that FOC range. So really quiet at the super, super low, but you hear that grumble. And then we come
come out of FOC, nice and quiet. So we'll see if that grumble improves with the drive lines in there. But just a little tension on the system may take away some of that vibration. But I think that's all motor. I can really feel it on the can. Just real chunky at that low speed until it gets going and then it's just butter. So anyways, I think that initially checks out. We'll uh, investigate further when the drive lines are in there. And uh, of course, we still got to get the servo at some point attached to this electronic setup here. But uh, so far, so good. Back to the second test, we got the drive lines in. So let's get this guy switched back on and maybe that took care of some of that low end grumble. Zoom this in here, pull this back and see if this is any better under load. Seems to be much better. And a little grumble. And then we're out of it. So it definitely quieted it down, just putting it under a little tension there. Let's look at these axles here. So no servo in, but I've got this laid all the way over on the diff, as extreme as it can get. Just super smooth, incredible. This great steering angle there. So just lacking that dang servo. I figure it's never a bad time for wheels and tires, so we may as well get a set on there. So continuing with the theme here, I've got the new Apex wheels in satin black. And these just look fantastic, that vintage slot. Just super nice, got a brass ring on them, so a little bit of weight, nice open back face, but always fantastic wheels from Little Guy. And then of course, we've got black labels for the actual tires, so as much black as we can get on this build. And then we're gonna stuff some of these nice, soft and super soft inserts from Injora in those guys. So I'm gonna punch a few holes in these tires and come back with these mounted up Back in black, labels that is, and man, do they look good on these satin black Apex wheels. Talk about a killer combo from Little Guy. Just fully completing this midnight theme. Full black out here. Does this guy even need a body? I don't think so. <laughs> you can see this stance now is sitting nice and low as well. So I've got the front limited with one of their bands as you can see there and then to match that ride height on the rear went ahead and installed a rubber band on each side going down to the shock and then up to just a plastic spacer and a black piece of hardware there so that's nice you can kind of raise and lower that depending on your rubber band tension on that shock tower there's just plenty of uh, modular places to thread in on this frame so it's really nice for little bits of tuning like that but uh, man, that's just gorgeous. So let's look at this front end, I guess. Let's check the important clearances here. So it looks like we are right at the shock, well away from the slider here. So at twist, let's see if we get into trouble. So it looks like we are getting friendly with the shock cap here at full twist, full compression. And I think we are just kissing the link here with the tire just barely so if you can see it there just barely but looks like that won't be an issue so let's flip it in this direction and we may have a little more problem wow yeah we'll swing around here so we have uh really eaten into this bumper here not not too bad but hopefully with this super soft insert and this super soft compound that won't be a hang up there, but definitely getting into that bumper a little bit with these uh, positive offset wheels here. Definitely sitting in nice and tucked, which is not a bad thing, 
but uh, you do have to watch your uh, clearances to the frame. But man, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with this initial setup. Still no servo, and of course, what are we doing for a body? Well, we'll get to that. All right, wanted to do one more quick test once I got the tires on here. Got a little more load here and just, I also remeshed the motor. I reseated the spur gear. I felt like in the video that I watched earlier on that initial test, it looked like some wobble on that spur. So I just reseated that just to be on the safe side and uh, full new mesh. So let's see what this sounds like now. So much quieter now with a little bit of load on it. You can hear a little bit of noise at FOC, but not much. Let's get this guy on the table. Can't really steer it, but kind of curious to see if this overdrive is really gonna hang up like my prior build. So this should be that 33%. So yeah, there is a little, a little driveline jump because there is no slippage. But nice and smooth otherwise. So I think that is just due to the rubber on the road. Look at that, that is just not easy to tabletop test when you've got overdrive and sticky tires like that. So I'm pondering, maybe uh, I've got, this is my third one now, so maybe I'll swap out some different gearing in this guy rather than that 33% and maybe uh, just see, I think I've got a 14T, may have a 13T, so we've got some 14% uh, and I believe 23% options. I could always go down to just stock 16T and have them even Steven, but uh, it's kind of annoying. There it is. We'll just hobble right off screen here. Back with even more black. Figured it's good enough time as any to jump into the second set of wheels and tires, get those picked out set up before I jump into any body trimming fender clearance issues. So. Speaking of clearance, we're going to go in the opposite direction with this setup here. So this is super negative offset, super deep dish. These are from PBRC, otherwise known as Poor Boys RC. So these are all aluminum, aluminum ring, everything. So I've got this back ring with four screws, super simple mounting, but not a lot of open space on the back of this wheel because of that that really wide ring there. So you can't have a big knuckle, can't have a big fat hex weight. So that's something to be aware of. So to make up for that weight, I picked up their separate brass rings that are gonna add quite a bit of heft to this guy. And then if you've been in the game for a while, you may recognize these. These are new tires, but they've actually been around for quite a while. These are Hobby Souls knockoffs of RC four wheel drives mudslingers. So these are a little taller, a little wider than the RC four wheel drive variant. Not too bad of a compound here from Hobby Soul. And the foams are actually not too bad for the actual tire. They're a little bit smaller than the tire and uh, soft, but they've got some sidewall support as well. But of course you can see, we're gonna be swapping in those Injora inserts, which I've actually already done on these guys just to do a little pre-test fitting to make sure there wasn't a massive bust. But uh, so far from my initial testing, they, uh, they seem to work well. So I'm gonna go ahead, mount up these other two, get them on the uh, comp frame. I won't even say truck yet because it's not, but uh, we'll go ahead and check those clearances, see what the track width looks like with another 10 millimeters per side. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Look at the deep dish goodness here. Those mud slingers are just insane at this wide scale. 
just a whole different look than the pizza cutter RC four wheel drive version. And man, they just get filled out on those deep dish rooms. Those look fantastic. So these measured out at not a full 10 plus per side, about six and a half extra per side. So look at that, we are clearing the link here at full lock. So let's see it full twist. We are clearing the link. We are touching the shock caps about the same. And look at that, we are clearing the skid or the slider. So nice clearance is there. So let's look at this uh, bumper. Did we get far enough forward to get out of it? And I don't know that we did. Almost, but we are still barely touching it. But again, we've got those super soft inserts. So hopefully this won't hang up on that bumper, but man, do they look good. Look at that, just awesome. It's like my spoiler back here until we get the body on. Got a little hinge piece, but man, that looks awesome right there. I'm super happy with these. Nice wide track width, look at that. You can see a lot more of the knuckle there, as you can see on both sides. But I think that is gonna give it a nice alternate wide stance, super aggressive tires, definitely a mean look. So that, that feels like that is a, a super solid second set right there. Well, I don't know about you, but man, I am really starting to feel the flow here with this build. Wait a minute, what was that? Hold on. Mail time is here, and keeping with the theme, I've got a tiny little black box delivered. So check that guy out. So I'll give you a second to decipher this logo, but I'm sure you probably know what this is, and I think this is gonna keep us flowing along here. So let's actually cut into this guy. See what we've got here. I think we all know something we've been needing for this build. So we've got three flow nines, fairly new torrent servo. So I'm gonna get this out and uh, we'll take a closer look at it, but it looks like we've got some little cones as well thrown in there. Always get some freebies with three flow, super great little small company. So uh, excited to try out this new torrent servo from them. So let's dig into this guy. Got this guy out of the box. And the first thing you're gonna notice besides this sweet three flow nine graphic is the rear exiting cable. So that's super handy for frame clearances. Most of the time it exits out of the side here on the rear. So a great little feature there. This does have the typical tabs and it is kind of the standard size, but a great looking little servo there. Keeping with the midnight theme all blacked out. So great little option there to try from 3Flow9. Unfortunately, there is no aluminum servo horn included. So that is a little bit of a bummer, but it is also an opportunity. So I always like to have a little mofo on the build. So I ordered up a black aluminum servo horn to do the job. So we'll get that guy on front and center. So let's take a little look at the specs here. So not too shabby here. You look at the stall torque up there, 80 ounce inch, 95 ounce inch, 104 ounce inch. So that's stepping up from six to 8.4. So I'm not sure the operating voltage will have this set at just yet, but let's take a look at the size down here in the lower left, 23.12 by 27.5. So let's pull over the uh, offender here in the build, 23, 13.4 by 27.5. So it was at 13.4 versus the 12. That was killing us on the height for that mount and getting everything misaligned. So now with this kind of standard size, standard height, I guess, servo, we should be good to go. And good to go, we are. So I got the servo installed, as you see, and it is super buttery, just nice and smooth, nice and blacked out. And I did a little more work. Went ahead and got the electronics in their final home. So why don't we run through that really quick and we'll come back and give it a final test.
Not too hard at all, as you saw, getting those electronics in, plenty of space in this comp frame. Not too shabby for the speed on that guy. I'll have to check my uh, Fury Tech app. I was about to say little guy app, but Fury Tech app and see what I've got that servo cranked to, but I need to pop it up to its highest setting. And uh, one thing I failed to mention or show a photo of, I guess, was I did a little gear swap on that front axle. So I took out the 212, 33% and popped in a 214. So it's a 14% overdrive. So much smoother, flat, you know, non-slip surface operation. So we still get a little overdrive on the front. You can really tell on a turn. So let's watch that inside tire. So it'll just start to bite and pull it. And so that's super nice to still have some overdrive. And there's still a little wind up as you can see, but much smoother overall on a flat surface. So can't complain with that. And uh, as you saw, got this thing set up for a 2S or a 3S battery. So that makes selection easy. It looks like a little 250 is gonna fit in this same position up front. So with the stock battery, you can see there's maybe two and a half, three millimeters to the can. And with that 250, it's like a hair. So it's just right there. But uh, anyways, I've got some other new tiny batteries as well. Definitely some options to Velcro on the sliders, but I wanted to leave myself basically open to some options here. But overall, a nice clean layout and went ahead and blacked out the wires a little further to keep with the theme. But uh, overall, I'm super happy with this as it's sitting, but I think we need to uh, address the elephant in the room. The one thing we haven't talked about, the body. So if you remember, all the way back to the beginning of the build, I mentioned shortening up this comp frame, and you can see I've got this X-Factor extension and hinge removed and on the table. That's because I picked up this brawler hinge kit from Little Guy for the comp frame. So if I pick that up, you know what that means that I also picked up the matching brawler body from Little Guy. And you can see, I've not even gotten it out of the bag yet. So coming at this one a little different, usually they're painted up, detailed, ready to go for the build. So we're gonna cut this bag open and take a closer look at this body. And I'm assuming gonna have to do a little bit of trimming to make those tires work. Okay, so I've got this test fit on there as you can see, but let's take a quick look at this uh, decal sheet first. So you get quite a few grill options. You get all your windshield masks, you get taillight masks, and what's nice, you get actually a hood mask. So that's pretty sweet. I was thinking about potentially doing something there anyways, and then you get some windshield banners to choose from. So quite a few options there, at least on the grill, geez. So uh, got the bumper here that'll eventually screw on. So nice and narrow, tucked little bumper. And then of course I had to take off the unicorn mount for now to get this guy to lay down since there's no hole in the hood. It's not pre-punched and I'm kind of on the fence if I'm gonna use the mount to center it. I'm gonna for sure do a magnet, I think. Um, it's just whether the hood is gonna have a hole in it or not. I kind of like the pin sticking up through there to kind of hold the position somewhat and have the magnet. But uh, anyways, that's neither here nor there but let's keep checking this body out. So this is one of those bodies, when it came out, I absolutely hated it. And then the more I looked at it, the more this kind of banana boat shape kind of grew on me. And I'm just really digging it. Like certain angles, it still looks kind of wonky, but uh, I think once I get it painted up and all situated, it's gonna look pretty good. At least I hope so. So I think just from test fitting, I'm gonna have to do a little fender clearance trimming for the uh, full lock of those big tires. And then the other thing I noticed test fitting it on is it won't fully seat on the front. So it won't sit down on this bumper. I think it's due to this little front cage piece here. So not knowing what I was getting into with this brawler body, I went ahead and picked up this billet front mount so this is in lieu of the whole cage. So it will just cantilever kind of off the shock tower here. So we won't have any of this to get in the way. So that ought to let the body sit down there. And then of course I picked up the billet unicorn mount in case I want to go that route.
But I think the first thing, I'm gonna pull this little front piece off, make the swap and see if this body will actually kind of sit down flush on that comp frame with a test fit. Back with this body mounted. And as soon as I swapped this front end out, I realized this wasn't the culprit. I thought it was these little screw nubs that were causing it, but I realized you just really need to pull the, the body just a little bit probably, and it'll sit right down on that. There's no height difference. So what the issue ended up being was uh, this coil of wire right here was sitting on top of the ESC and you can see I've kind of slid it forward over that battery plug. So it's sitting down below the shock tower. So that was really the issue causing this body to not want to sit down and it just reflected in the front because it was kind of popped up. So anyways, the fitment is really nice. The uh, bumper, getting that on there, there is a little bit of slop up and down. So the holes are not too close to the bottom of the Lexan. So you can kind of adjust that as needed, but uh, nothing to it. And I'm really, really digging this look now that I've got this mounted up and situated, kind of waffling on this rear cut if I want to extend it or not. Um, I thought it was kind of odd, but now I'm kind of liking it the more I look at it, but it, it is a little off center of the axle. So there may be some adjustment there just visually, but the front is going to definitely need adjustment for uh, ability more than just visually. So at full lock, full twist, Look at that. So we're going to have to take out quite a bit of that fender edge. And then I think we're going to have the same issue, of course, at this front bumper. Probably not as bad, but we're still going to still going to get into the tip of that fender there. So I've got to come up with a nice creative trimming scheme. And then, of course, haven't talked colors yet. I'm pretty undecided on that. I've already got a couple of all blacked out, murdered out builds under my belt. So I'm thinking because everything is blacked out now, maybe adding a, a pop of color would be the way to go to get this body to really stand out. So I'm thinking I'm definitely gonna have some black on the bed. So there will be some black on the body. But uh, anyways, I've got a little decision making, a little thinking ahead of me and potentially quite a bit of trimming. So I'm gonna get a little work done, a little painting done come back and we'll take a look at the finished product. One thing I forgot to mention about this front nose piece kind of swap out was uh, kind of the, the shape here in front of the mount. So you can see that's pretty wide and there's just this little cross brace there at the unicorn mount versus this billet one, you get kind of the recess and you get three edges there and then you get this full piece here for the unicorn mount. So this looks like it's going to allow a magnet, a circular magnet to drop in there and kind of rest on those three edges, get a little glue under there. Plus it's recessed down, allowing you to stack another one for the body, maybe two, depending on height and hold. But it looks like a really good setup to be able to plop a magnet right behind the unicorn mount and keep that mount. And I'm still kind of waffling on that. This sits down in these sliders, like perfectly centered basically on this front, but the mount would allow me to uh, put a little tension on the body and pull it forward, basically, if I wanted to uh, adjust where that hole is. And I think that's kind of how they intended it for this one. That's usually what they say, at least for the, the other bodies, that you have to put a little tension, pull it down, and then uh, it fits right on there. But I think that may be a good reason to keep this aluminum guy in play just for magnet mounting and uh, I'll figure out I'll figure out if I'm gonna poke the hole in the hood or not I'm still a little undecided but um, we'll see but I just wanted to mention that as far as mounting if you're gonna try to use magnets this may be a better option for you back again no paint yet but I got the body trimmed up and I'm prepped for it so uh, you can see here nice widening of that front fender and then I added a little bit of length to this rear. I probably took off four or five millimeters of that to uh, bring that back and then I just kind of thinned out the fender a little here along these edges and uh, other than that not much to it. Tried to round this bottom edge as much as possible. That's a big hang up there so trying to get that tucked but uh, overall, I think it came out really good. 
And I've got these tools on the table. This is what I use to trim. Got the straight scissors, the curve, but uh, you really, you know, the straights are hard to use because you usually have to come in at an angle. So these curves are pretty good because you can come in at an angle and actually snip and cut a straight line with curved scissors. So I use these quite a bit, but you can see these are really tight curved corners here. So had to get so far and then kind of stop and then work those with the X-Acto and then come back and smooth everything really nicely with just a little filing stick like this. So really easy, but it just took a little time. You know, the first side's easy. The second side's a little harder trying to match it up. But uh, let me pull this over a little closer here. You'll notice I've got some magnets in there as well. So I've already figured out my magnets I'm gonna need. So I tried, several different sizes and I landed on needing a 10 millimeter really to sit in there. So I only had these little 10 by ones. So what I've got in there is a 10 by one and then I've got two eight millimeter by two millimeter stacked on top and that's the perfect height there. And those two by eights will give me more hold. I could stack a ton of these, but this seems a little bit easier. And then I've got this piece out again because it came into play with kind of body fitment here. So I wanted to get this sitting at the same point on this bumper. So it screws in to that bumper. So initially I put the screws just into the bumper as kind of a catch point, but then I realized these little plastic nubs come out even further. So you can see there once it's screwed in. So I'll show you what I ended up doing here. I'll pull the body off. You can see it kind of pop back. So that's kind of where it naturally sits. So I've actually got two of these unicorn mounts screwed in on each side. So there's a little bit of material for their, you know, attachment there. Basically the same amount as that plastic would be. Of course, I don't have these magnets glued in, but if I drop the body in the rails, you can see the nose sits up a little bit, basically sits up on the screws. So pull it forward and that gives it that little stretch sits right down on there flush exactly where it would be with this kind of front cage piece. So if I ever swap this out, be the same position there, but uh, nice snug fit. I think that will also aid when I'm actually gluing the body side down, it'll help stabilize everything, you know, keep it from wiggling, keep it from wanting to go forward and backwards. So that's nice. And I think I'm going to lean towards no unicorn mount, at least to start with. Can always modify that and add it, but uh, this is what I ended up with here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think get the base couple of magnets glued in. So I'm gonna glue the small one to the large one so there's no slipping around like that. And then these two that actually match size will actually just, you know, of course mate up and won't have any slippage because they are the same magnet. But in theory, that's gonna work and hopefully be a super clean mounting solution for this guy. So still ahead, a little paint work, and I'll be back. Back fresh out of paint, and this time no black. We have brought a little color to this build finally, and just so excited, had to uh, stop in, have a little checkpoint here, so you could take a look at this freshly painted body here. So this is what, PS14 copper, and this just looks incredible. So exactly how I was imagining it, it came out really nice. So you can see I didn't end up using the hood mask, I just, uh, Felt like that would just take away too much of the color. There's already a lot of black here in the back, but there's just not a lot of body to work with. So I think it looks good, just solid color and uh, really nice uh, vinyl masks for the windows and really deep molding on these as well. So the windows are nice and inset. So anyways, just wanted to check in here. This went really well. A um, couple notes, I've got my peel here. This went really well, all one piece, but you can see I've got quite a bit of patching. So always check your peel. Um, this had symmetrical scuffing, so I'm assuming it's because they stack bodies after they uh, cut them or something. 
So just double check that and then, you know, any edges that are starting to peel up, make sure and get those down so you don't get any overspray on the outside of the body. But like I say, this came out uh, really clean. You can see no overspray anywhere. Really nice. So ready to go here. I guess next up for me is making a little decision here, picking out a grill out of one of these uh, six here. So anyways, this is going well, and uh, we'll be back with hopefully the magnets glued in, this guy mounted up. All right, got the magnets gluing in and setting up. Figured it'd be a good time to take a look at this CowRC little storage box here. So super handy, has these little strips of four with individual caps, and then they come in a larger box, obviously. So it's super easy to just open one lid and fish in there, dump some out without opening all of them. Keeps them nice and separated, but uh, honestly, I'm just killing time until we get to wild cards. You knew we were gonna do it. So I've got another set here. And of course, we're keeping with the black theme with the wheels. So these are OGRC, and I think they just call these solid, just solid wheels here. That's all the packaging you get. Not much uh, detail, but they have the nice heavy OGRC brass ring. And of course it's vented. It's got some uh, chunky hardware, as you can see on the back there. And it does kind of stick out from the back wheel face a little bit. So you can't have uh, potentially, you know, a super big hub or, or knuckle face. You might get a little rubbing there. And then for the meat, of course, we've got the J Concepts ruptures. So these were sold out for a while and they finally came back in stock. So I picked up another set. So these are the big boys at 63. So right there in the sizing we've got going on this build. And then you can see I'm gonna stuff them like the others with these Enjora inserts, the super soft and soft. So, you know, of course I've mounted one up. I've only got three on the table. So let's take a quick look at it. That looks super sick. Nice deep dish. Only thing better would be solid black, no lettering, but it uh, doesn't really bother me. So I've got a vent here in the back, and these feel so nice. Man, and they just look killer. These inserts fill them out nicely. So got a few more to get mounted up, then we'll get them on the uh, truck and uh, actually get a look at it here with some fresh wheels and tires. Here we are with the wild cards and they are looking super sick really digging that deep dish solid wheel of course i think they would look a little bit better if it was fully black but like i said i'm not going to complain i think that's a great look nice 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 wide offset there with those wheels and it looks like we're going to be about perfect here at full twist, full lock, look at that, money. So good body cut there. And uh, let's check the nose here, so we can check this side. Twist it up again, so same thing, just right there at the fender edge. So just perfect, and just looking super fat there, super wide. A little bit smaller tire than those uh, previous ones, but man. They definitely fill out the truck nicely in 63's work. So getting this guy fully squatted, nice and low right there. So we're sitting about mid rise, I guess, of those shocks. So nice, nice position there for the body. So I think the only thing now we really haven't looked at is this magnet mount and that should be all glued up. Here we are, moment of truth. So let's get this guy popped open. Look at that, sweet. So these guys stayed put and then under the hood, I ended up doing tape just because I've had some issues in the past with some ghosting coming through on the magnet with metallic paints. So I didn't want to take any chances there, but uh, you can see that pulls it down nice and snug there. 
So I've still got those kind of guide pieces in there, those two unicorn mounts. So those are gonna come out, obviously. And uh, what I think I'm gonna do is put this guy back in, but it obviously won't fit. So I'm gonna cut out all this upper support, basically where that new triangular mount is and just try to leave some of the cage and brace uh, just for effect. But that'll give me the little plastic nubs here and screw points. So it'll give me that alignment on the front basically give me the best of both worlds. So something sitting like that, but just imagine that actually sitting down and working. So that's the idea there. But then when I close it, it'll still have that little bit to stretch it nice and uh, even there across the front and, you know, get some usage out of this piece that I would otherwise not. But I think that uh, does it for the body. Oh, wait a minute. I've got one last little thing, almost forgot about it. So one little surprise here. Back again, I've got to stop doing that. Back again with the first set of black wheels and tires on here. So this is the only set we haven't seen with the body and they're looking just as awesome as the other two sets. A little bit uh, narrower track width here, but still nice and wide with these Super 8s. And you'll notice I added a little detail in the form of some little guy stickers here. So I had to add a little bit more to this body. It was a little bare. And then one thing I forgot to uh, mention earlier was the tail lights here. So you can see those have a nice uh, clear red. So the way I did that at the end was just brushed on a little PS55 flat clear. And that was just to make sure I had some good bond. And this is just some testers, I guess, stoplight red. So this is their translucent red. So I wanted to, it's not made for polycarbonate. So that's why I put the PS55 on there first, but that's an easy way to do little things like that at the end. Just brush it on. Don't have to worry about spraying those little guys or remasking. So super easy there, but none of that is actually the surprise. So this is just like an 80s cereal box here. The surprise is inside. So for that, we're going to need a battery. Are you ready? Are you ready? Boom, we got some tail lights actually lit. Look at those bad boys. So I figured if they were gonna provide masks and I was gonna paint them red, might as well get a little light in there. So these guys are actually little units that I've had forever. Pretty simple, just two red LEDs on a splitter, but they come with little 3D printed, I guess, housings that are real generic, kind of rectangular pieces. So. Unfortunately, you just get the bulb. It doesn't fill out the whole vertical kind of tail light piece on here, but I think it's better than nothing. Doesn't look half bad, if you ask me. So let's take a quick look under here. I guess before we look at the underside, I'll show you a quick montage of the install. So as you saw, nothing really to it. Let's crack this open. Oh, you can see I got the front piece in. That fit in there just perfectly. And then uh, look how clean that worked out. Got it all blacked out. Got my whip able to coil up. It's all tucked in. So just super easy. Added a little bit more detail to this pretty plain body, but I think it works. I think really all this needs is black. I pop a color and then every build needs a little bit of light. So I think that is gonna wrap up this guy as far as the build. The only thing really left to do is a little bit of testing. All right. Finally time to do this. So I've got the unknowns on here, the Hobby Soul Mudslinger knockoffs. I was just itching to see how these guys did. Look at that. You see that 14% overdrive there. Look like 
They're not having any problem at all creeping up this guy. Nice and slow. We'll creep it over this edge. You can see a little of that overdrive jump here since we're not really slipping. Let's get one of these tires loose. Like that. Creep it down. Come at this from the back side here and check out these tail lights. We got a tire squish, no problem. Nice articulation. Nice motor control. See a little of the stutter and drop it on down. Look at that though. That sure makes a big difference not having that uh, big overhang at the bed versus the uh, X Factor truck. Look at that. Very nice departure angle. One last approach here. We'll get all twisted here on the side. I have to back this camera up a little. Look at that nice little creep right there. All right, now we're gonna kind of have to flop it over. Just pulling itself right around with that steering angle and overdrive. Well, this is why you do testing. So I've got the uh, second set of wheels and tires on here. And as I was getting going, I was seeing some motor kind of jumping, stalling. And I got into the Fury Tech app and then uh, I looked under the hood and you can see there the motor was rubbing and you can see there's a little a little silver there on the spokes. So uh, I think the motor was getting caught. So I moved the battery and I no longer had the issue. So you can see I've now installed a little Velcro on the side tray for this 3S. So the 2S is still fine. The stock battery can run and I actually installed a little extension coil and I'll show a few shots of that. but that allows, you know, more positioning of this. I can get up here easier. I could double back over here behind the transmission, but uh, the thought is to uh, maybe ride this guy right here and keep, keep it out of the strap and keep it from rubbing this. So little fix here and we'll be back to testing. All right, we are back in action. A smooth motor, no hangups. So always a good thing to Check and make sure those outrunners are clear of anything because they are spinning. And like you saw, that can be bad news. Let's see if these uh, double bend lowers can clear. Oh, let's lift this up so you can see. Look at that. Just money, just perfect transition with those sliders and the skid. So no issues there, that's excellent. Get a little wider shot over here. Keep it creeping, but look how smooth that is. So nice. Definitely glad I identified that little uh, motor hang up. So now we get a little stutter from the overdrive as we're creeping down. There we go, we're starting to get some slip. And bring it on down, nice departure. Hit this guy at an angle. Let's get twisted up here. See if we can't get these ruptures to grab. Looks like it. Get 
this overdrive and steering will kind of pull us up, pull us around a little. Look at that. Easy, easy does it. And get the belly. Flex is just incredible. All right, we're gonna try it from this opposite direction. Doubtful we'll make it up. And with this long wheelbase, I feel like we gotta take it at a creative angle here. Wiggle and squirm, but up and over. All right, bringing out the originals. Back to the black labels here on these sweet apex rims. So I figured we'd change it up a bit, see if we can't do some different lines here. Get this guy twisted up, see if we can side hill. Look at that creep. So pretty good balance so far. Got that. Rear passenger floating. I think that'll come down and grab. Look at that. Just nothing, nothing for these black labels. Just grip and conform, just super soft. Let's see these peeling over the edge. Look at that, just straddled it right on over. All right, another, another new approach. Kind of have to straddle over this ramp. Look at that, we just repositioned our rear end with that servo strength. So I've got this servo up at the 6.5. Highest setting for this Fury Tech ESC. Let's see if we can swivel without totally tumping. Kind of pivot on this slider edge a little. And there it is, right on down. Well, I think that may do it for the tabletop testing. I think all of these uh, tires perform just fine. And once that motor battery strap issue got worked out, I don't think there will be any more little motor issues. Everything seems to be nice and smooth. And that 14% overdrive definitely helps on, uh, you know, flat, slipless surfaces. So a lot better tabletop testing, a lot smoother with that 14%. And still gives me that nice little bit of overdrive but I gotta say, I think that was a successful round. Well, ladies and gents, it looks like we are at the end of this build. And I gotta say, I think this is a worthy addition to the LGRP comp frame builds in the background. So I got three, I guess, pretty different setups here as far as uh, the look, the, the chassis, the weight, the wheels, the tires. So, uh, Different motors on all these guys, very similar, but we've got a BAM, we've got the Creeper V2, and then we've got this new LGRP Fury Tech Micro Komodo, of course, in this guy. But all in all, just super happy with this, loving both sets of the wheels and tires here. The uh, deep dish look great, as well as these nice positive offset Apex, and uh, you can't ever go wrong with these black labels. They tend to look good on just about every build that I've put them on, but uh, man, not too many surprises on this one. Went fairly smooth besides the little servo issue. Got the front uh, caster worked out with those double bend steering links. That was a nice little mod there. 
And then of course we got the new motor and ESC, kind of new motor and ESC, basically the same. But uh, anyways, hope you had fun on this one. Hope you learned something. I know I did, always do. But until next time, thanks for watching.